first episode is about using the scientific method to solve problems. Students will be able to understand the importance of studying science, the steps of the scientific method, and how to keep an experiment valid. For you to study, here is a list of the following vocabulary words covered in this episode. It might look like a lot, because it is. It is very important to know these words, because knowing these words will make answering questions easier. Take a few moments to either take a photo, or remember to ask your teacher for a copy of these words. Science relies on logic and creativity. Science is both a body of knowledge and a way of knowing about the unusual things happening around us. These unusual things are called phenomena. Imagine, for example, you bought a perfectly good phone from the store a month ago. At first, the phone works fine, but now you are unable to use the phone at all. This is a phenomena because it is unusual and not supposed to happen with a new phone. You would then begin to wonder about it and try to explain how this unusual thing happened. This wondering is the beginning of a process known as scientific inquiry. Science is a process that applies human intelligence to explaining how the world works. The science that studies the living environment around you is called biology. The prefix bio means life, and the suffix ology means the study of. Just like cosmetology is a study of cosmetics, criminology is a study of the criminal mind, and zoology is the study of animals. Everyone should have a basic scientific knowledge of their living and non-living environment. This is necessary because it is important to be informed when making important decisions in everyday life. Health questions and judgments concerning things like what types of foods to eat, how chemical waste impacts the environment, or how music affects concentration are examples of situations that require knowledge about science. Understanding the scientific view of the natural world is an essential part of being an adult, so you can make personal, societal, and ethical decisions. Science is made of facts, theories, and laws. Facts are based on experiments and careful observation. No one can argue a fact because they are widely believed to be true. Theories are scientific guesses, but are possible answers to complex problems. Theories are not necessarily correct, but theories are explanations developed by using both observations and facts that people already know about the world. Theories change as new evidence is found, and eventually these theories become scientific laws. A scientific law exists only when many scientists repeat the experiment and get the same conclusions. Good science involves questioning, observing, and inference making. An inference is to reach a conclusion based on logic. Good science also leads to experimentation, finding evidence, collecting and organizing data, drawing a valid conclusion, and using other people to review your information. We will go into more detail about these steps next. The technique for scientific inquiry, commonly used by scientists to solve problems, is known as the scientific method. The scientific method solves problems in a logical and organized way. It involves asking questions along with locating, interpreting, and processing information from a variety of sources. You also need to make judgments about the reliability and the relevance of the information. This is very important in today's world where there is just so much information that we need to decide what's important and what is not. You've probably used this process yourself to solve your own problems every day. Here are the steps. First, state the problem. The problem is a question that the scientist is trying to answer. For example, if we're going to use the phone example, you could ask yourself, why is my phone not working? Or, how could I fix my phone? After that, it's time to do research. Research can be done in many different ways. Obviously, you can use your computer, but good research always involves reading previous experiments, scientific literature, and websites made by authors with credibility. Of course, Books and articles are also great ways to conduct research. Let's say, for example, that you do research on your phone using the phone manual book that came with your purchase, or you go to the company website to read the FAQs. Also, you could just watch YouTube videos on how other people fix that problem. Second, form a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a prediction about the possible answer to the problem. The hypothesis is based on research, 
which would include any previous knowledge about the problem and observations and information gained from studying the problem. A hypothesis is also used to determine what type of data to collect and how to interpret the data. A hypothesis must also be testable. Even if my hypothesis uh, turns out not to be true, it still may prove valuable because it may lead to further investigations. The hypothesis is a statement and never a question. So, for our example, we could simply say that the phone is not working because the battery does not function, or the phone is not working because it does not have the software update. One of the easiest ways to remember how to write a hypothesis is the if-then statement which makes a relationship between the possible solution and the way that you would know that it fixes the problem. For example, you could say that if the battery is not functioning, then changing the battery will fix the phone. Or, if the phone needs a software update, then updating the phone will fix the problem. Next, test the hypothesis with an experiment. An experiment is a strict procedure that you follow so that you can observe the changes to the thing you are trying to test. To test a hypothesis, the scientist designs an experiment called a controlled experiment. A controlled experiment must test only one factor. The factor that is being tested is called the variable. Another experimental setup is done at the same time with every condition being the same, except that it does not contain the experimental variable. This part of the experiment that is left alone is called the control. You've probably read about the testing of medicines. There are always two groups, the group that is given the real medicine and the group that is given sugar pills. This sugar pill group is called the control group. The sugar pill, which is called a placebo, is given to that group so that they believe they are also being given the actual medicine, so that they don't behave any differently from the first group. The control group is used to make comparisons later. So it's very important that you have a control group, otherwise you can't compare your results. Then, make observations. The scientist now makes observations called data, or data, that are recorded in an organized manner and are represented as tables, diagrams, charts, graphs, equations, and pictures. Observations may include careful mathematical measurements as well as observations made with the five senses, or with scientific instruments like a thermometer or a probe. We will spend more time on graphing and measurements in our next episode. After that, you come to a conclusion. Interpreting the data may produce a conclusion for that problem, or it might lead to the development of additional problems, or it could give additional explanations that were not in your original hypothesis. Answering the problem is called the conclusion. And last, repeat the experiment. Okay, so technically this isn't a step, but it emphasizes the idea that scientific inquiry is a cycle. To be valid or true, the conclusion must have been reached by using proper scientific procedures. It also must be made public so that the investigation can be repeated many times by other scientists who test the conclusion. As we said before, repeating results can lead to forming a new scientific law. A conclusion can be questioned if any of the following improper scientific procedures are used. The data is based on a small amount of samples, such as, you know, five, ten people. The experiment was not repeated, or if it was only done a small number of times. The experiment was not controlled, or the control and experimental groups were not similar enough. The conclusion does not match the data given, right? This is an example where your conclusion just doesn't make sense with the data you are given. These practices can make an experiment invalid, meaning that the results are not reliable or supported. This is important because when we make new medicines, technology, or vehicles, we want them to be safe. Ways to avoid this and to make the experiment valid, you would need to use a large sample size, you know, maybe a thousand people or ten thousand people. You would need to repeat the experiment many times and make sure that the experiment has a control group with a strict procedure. And last, only make conclusions based on evidence that actually exists in your data. For the purposes of the New York State Regents, the first three are the most important to know. All scientific explanations are tentative and subject to change or improvement. Each new piece of evidence can sometimes create more questions than answers. This process leads to a better understanding of how things work in the living world. 
we did pretty good today. Let's do a little summary of what we basically covered. Most important things, biology is the study of life. The scientific method is a way of investigating new problems in the world, and there's a certain way to do that. The steps of the scientific method are stating the problem, conducting research, make your hypothesis, perform a controlled experiment, collect data, make a conclusion, make an experiment more valid so that it can be trusted by the scientific community, and last, repeat the experiment. The following are just some things to remember specifically for the New York State Regents. These questions always come up and they're very important to review. The first, a hypothesis is making an educated guess about what might happen in an experiment. Never write a hypothesis in the form of a question. The control group should be left unchanged. The experimental group is where you would make changes. Making an experiment valid means making it better, making it more supported. To do this, an experiment must always have a control group. A valid conclusion needs to be reliable and supported. And to improve the validity of an experiment, increase the sample size or repeat the experiment. I want to thank you for tuning in. That is the end of our episode. Please join us next episode as we continue to cover the living environment.